In part one of this episode, we introduced you to the periodic table of the elements and why all chemistry students should understand its structure and origins. Now we continue to unearth the story of how the chemical elements came to be organized into this famous chart. Have you ever wondered where the chemical elements come from, how they were discovered, and how they are mined, refined, and turned into finished products? Would you like to know where materials like glass, steel, and concrete come from? Do you need to find out how energy is produced, the environmental impacts and hazards of chemicals, or the history of chemistry? Student teams from communities around the country are interviewing scientists, engineers, and historians to answer these questions in The Elements Unearthed, Our Discovery and Usage of the Chemical Elements. This episode of The Elements Unearthed was made possible by a research fellowship provided by the American section of the Société de Chimie Industrielle at the Chemical Heritage Foundation in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. As we learned last time, the invention of the periodic table didn't happen overnight. Several things had to happen first. As more elements were discovered in the first half of the 19th century, it became more and more urgent to create some sort of organizing scheme for the elements. Chemists were stymied by the confusion of various sets of atomic weights and molecular formulas, and by unclear definitions of just what atoms, elements, and molecules were. These issues were cleared up at the Karlsruhe Conference in 1860. Alexandre Emile de Chancatois, in 1862, was the first to recognize the periodicity of the elements, that as one goes from element to element in order of increasing atomic weight, the properties of the elements seem to repeat periodically. He created a three-dimensional helical system to show this pattern. But since he was a geologist and his diagram wasn't published with the article, he was largely ignored. Others, such as Leopold Gmelin in 1843 and John Newlands, William Odling, Gustavus Hendricks, and Lothar Meyer in the 1860s also tried various charts for organizing the elements, some of which were fairly successful. But it was Dmitri Mendeleev who gets most of the credit for the invention of the periodic table. To learn the story of Mendeleev and his successors, we interviewed Dr. Eric Sherry of UCLA, author of the book The Periodic Table, Its Story and Its Significance, by Oxford University Press. Throughout this episode, we will also use the diagrams and notes of Edward G. Mazurs, who wrote a definitive book in 1957 and 1974 about ways of classifying various periodic tables, titled Graphic Representations of the Periodic System During 100 Years. These notes are archived at the Chemical Heritage Foundation in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Dmitry Mendeleev was a 26-year-old postdoctoral fellow at Robert Bunsen's laboratory in Heidelberg, Germany, when he attended the Karlsruhe Conference in 1860 and heard about the revised atomic weights of Stanislaw Konizaro. Mendeleev essentially took about 10 years to arrive at his periodic system from, from start to finish. It can also be said that he arrived at his periodic system over a much shorter space of time, or at least the, the concrete periodic table came about when he was writing a textbook of inorganic chemistry and having finished the first volume was then faced with the question of which elements to treat next and he was pretty much forced to decide on a on an order of priority a sort of a way of uh, organizing his thoughts and it seems to be at about that time he sat down he um, refused to go on an appointment that he was supposed to go on to visit a cheese factory he was used to doing quite a lot of consultancy work and he just stayed at home and began to sketch out rudimentary periodic systems. There are some fragment manuscripts that have survived. There's one famous one which has a coffee stain on the back so it appears as if he was probably having breakfast when he first started to sketch out these rows, short rows of five or six elements. Over a matter of a few days he developed the first system which contained about 60 elements. Now imagine the difficulties faced in the 1860s. Over 60 elements had been discovered and their atomic weights measured, although in some cases not very accurately. There were gaps in the list and an entire family of elements, the noble gases, was unknown. As Mendeleev started jotting down notes and ideas on February 17, 1869, he appears to have worked and reworked it several times. 
hitting dead ends and starting over, until he finally succeeded where others had not. His periods of elements were not all the same length. They got larger as the atomic weights increased. We now know that there is a pattern to this, but this pattern is hard to see without understanding electron orbitals. Mendeleev had to go on faith that such a pattern was there. His first table was organized at right angles to the table we are used to seeing, but if we turn the table sideways and then flip it horizontally, we see something like the modern standard format periodic table. I think Mendeleev had a more complete system, a more successful system, uh, and Mendele the, the big distinction, at least the way it's usually portrayed, is that Mendeleev left gaps in his periodic system, made predictions, and above all, because a number of those predictions were successful, especially in three famous cases, gallium, germanium, and scandium. It should also be mentioned that there's a debate among historians and philosophers of science these days uh, about just how important predictions are in scientific theories. To the layperson, a scientific prediction which comes true is very, very dramatic. Of course, it makes the headlines. But scientists are not always that impressed by dramatic predictions. They're also impressed by what are called accommodations, the fitting in of information that's already known. And so when people ask, well, why did Mendeleev's system gain acceptance? It was because of the successful predictions and because of the successful accommodations. And in the case of the periodic table, we're talking about literally accommodating elements into their places in the periodic table. And one isn't completely free to put the elements where you want. You have to put them in where they make sense chemically. Remember that the elements in a group have to have the same properties. You have to have increasing atomic weight in the time of Mendeleev. So there are constraints, and yet it is a major challenge to be able to fit all the elements, or as many of them as possible, into your framework, into your periodic system. And that's another great thing that Mendeleev did. I mean, there, are, there were something like 60 el known elements which he had to fit into the framework to accommodate, and uh, that's a lot more than the three predictions that he made. He then proceeded to show his work to others and arranged for its publication, in addition to completing his chemistry textbook. First of all, he published on a single sheet of paper his periodic system with very little explanation and he sent this out to 100, 150 chemists around Europe. Then there was a short report on a conference at which actually somebody else presented his periodic system. The report of this appeared in a Russian chemical journal but also in a German chemical journal. And after that, uh, within a period of two years, he published a few articles longer articles in which he began to explain what the basis of the periodic system, what some of the surrounding ideas were all about. I think the reaction initially was one of disbelief or one of interesting as a curiosity but wouldn't, wouldn't go very far. And once they could see that it could uh, dramatically predict the existence of new elements, then people started to take notice. By the end of his lifetime he was the most famous scientist, never mind chemist, in Russia by far, and he's still celebrated in Russia today as one of their most famous ever scientists. Mendeleev did a lot of other things as well, all sorts of things. He, was a, he wrote on the Russian oil industry, he, he apparently even visited Pennsylvania and wrote a report on the American oil industry. Uh, he went on one of the first balloon flights for a Russian to study the, the atmosphere. He did all, all sorts of scientific things. Mendeleev continued to revise and work on his periodic system and created new versions over many years. Yet neither he nor anyone else could explain why the periodic table had the shape it did or why the pattern of periodicity seemed so irregular. It would take the work of chemists and physicists for the next century to accomplish this. Once the quantum nature of the electron was discovered by Niels Bohr, and the quantum mechanical model of electron orbitals was worked out by Schrodinger, the structure of the periodic table could finally be explained. It's the, the, the discoveries of modern physics at the turn of the 20th century. And they would be things like radioactivity, uh, which incidentally Mendeleev doubted. He, he would not believe, he refused to believe initially that the atoms could break down. For him, atom, atoms were immutable. And radioactivity was evidence that atoms could not only break down, but it was soon realized that they could turn into other atoms.